day, YouTube. This is just a bit of a quick comparison video between Pop OS 21.10 on the left and Fedora 35 on the right. So without further ado, let's get into it. So starting off, as you can guess by the versioning of the names, they're both point releases. So they do come out every six months or so. Now we've got Pop OS, which is really based off Ubuntu, whereas Fedora is really uh, the, the upstream part of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux there. So you're going to get uh, some of the cutting edge things on the Fedora side. But let's check under the hood in a moment and see what's really going on there. So let's load up some nice little visuals that I have prepared earlier and have a look. So we've got the Pop OS, Fedora there. Let's have a look at the... Uh, now, actually, I should probably firstly say that they are actually both running on the GNOME desktop environment there. So let's actually move things around and have a look at how the GNOME desktop environments work because they are a little bit different here. Just the, the, the way of the, the workspaces and the workflows, how it all works there. So if I want to go to the start menu, I suppose I'm just going to the start menu in Fedora and typing in what I want or go to this little uh, dot dot section there to have a look at the apps. Uh, on the right hand side, it's the same but different. You've got a second option there for it and it's quite nice the way that they've set this one up here. So it's uh, you can kind of see the background but you've got access to type in whatever you want to, to load it up and away you go. It's also got a, like a little uh, app finder here as well so you just type it in uh, maybe a little bit quicker. So that's pretty cool too, but otherwise much of a muchness, uh, pretty much the same, both the GNOME desktop environment there. Now uh, the file manager, which I did start to load up there before, will be roughly the same here too. It's certainly different colouring, uh, Fedora seems to go with the more stock look and feel for, for GNOME, the GNOME desktop environment, which I'm not a fan of, gotta say. It reminds me of Ubuntu from the 2000s, like 2005 or something, just not a fan. Whereas uh, I, I love the, the cool colors, the tones, the accents, everything that uh, Pop is doing. I'm loving the blue and the, 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 the dark mode there as well. Uh, if we do do a little bit of a right click here, we'll see that uh, we can open in terminal. So I'm enjoying that very, very, very much too. Let's have a look under the hood there now and see what is the go. Uh, compadre. So uh, we have uh, the kernel, which is uh, 15... 5.15 on uh, Pop OS, whereas the quote unquote bleeding edge Fedora is 5.14. Probably the reason for this is that Pop OS is actually uh, on beta release at the moment. It's coming out soon, but uh, they're probably looking to run with the 5.15 kernel, so is what it is. Slightly older GNOME though, and slightly newer GNOME on the right hand side, so you know, have it as you will. And uh, even a little bit further under the hood, let's have a look at the CPU and RAM usage. So CPU is looking good. RAM is never great for GNOME. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, I use Ubuntu, which technically does use the GNOME front end, customized, and it's using a lot of RAM here as well. So nearly a gigabyte, over a gigabyte. <laughs> so 1,010 th megabytes of RAM on boot up. There's nothing really loaded in the background. Uh, and uh, let's just close out everything we can though. And 1.15 gigabytes of RAM, so really high. I'm super not a fan of this. There is much lighter Linux desktop operating systems around. Having said that, Windows is going to get you 1.6, 1.8 on boot up a lot of the time, which is just not fair. But hey, that's life. So thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button, and I hope to see all of you guys there in the next one.